Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, and today I'll be reading an Arlequino Accessor by me, so let's get into it. The sounds of the orphanage was heavy tonight. The hall sought emptier than ever. The absence of your presence like a gaping wound that Arlequino could not ignore. You had been the gentler one. The kind soul who made the children laugh and helped balance her harsh demeanor. You were her light, her anchor, and now you are gone. Weeks had passed since you succumbed to that terminal illness that had slowly stolen you away from her. Because despite all her efforts, that outcome had been inevitable from the very start. She had held your hand in your final moments, her grip firm as if sheer well could tether you to this world alone. Before your death, Harley Keen never really thought she had the ability to cry. But now, when children were asleep and the orphanage was quiet, the tears came unbidden and unstoppable in ways she had never expected. Tonight she left the orphanage under the pretense of needing air. The cold wind bit at her skin as she wandered through the streets of Fontaine at night. Her expression unreadable, but her heart heavy. She didn't have a destination in mind. All she wanted and needed right now was an escape, even if only briefly. And that was precisely when she heard them. Two men, standing near a tavern, their voices loud and mocking as they drank. She was not really paying attention at first. There wasn't really anything unusual about a couple of drunk hearts at night. But the mention of your name made her freeze in her tracks. Did you hear about that one? The partner of the knave. They were so weak, they couldn't even hold out for her. Pathetic. One of them sneered. Imagine being with someone like that. She's better off now, honestly. That was dead weight. Literally. The other laughed, and the words hit her like a blade to the chest. Arlequina's hand clenched into fists at her sides, her nails digging into her palms. She had tolerated many things in her life. Insults, betrayals, maybe even assassination attempts. And that was all usual. It never really upset her. She always had a way to deal with them. But hearing your name sullied by these vermin was something she couldn't really stand. So without a single word, or warning, she stepped into the dim light of the street lamp, her imposing figure, casting a shadow over the two men. He didn't notice her at first, too lost in their crude, cruel jokes. But the chill in the air seemed to grow heavier, and they turned, just to see her standing there, ominously. Oh, hey, what do you want? One of them stammered, his bravado faltering under her steely gaze. Arlequina's voice, on the other hand, was calm, but it carried a dangerous edge. You're speaking of someone you don't deserve to even mention. The other man tried to scoff, though his voice wavered. What's it to you? Just some dead weakling, right? Her movements were swift, imperceptible. In an instant, she had the first man pinned against the wall, her hand gripping his throat tightly, and his eyes widened in terror as he struggled against her iron grip. Wine was stronger than you will ever be. You dare to mock someone who faced death with courage. Someone who brought light to the darkest corners of this world. And think I will let you get away with it? You're severely mistaken. The second man stumbled back, clearly debating whether to run or try to help his friend. Arlequino did not give him a chance. She released the first one letting him fall to the ground 
gasping for air, and turned her piercing gaze to the other. You'll leave right now, before I decide to make an example of you as well. The man did not need to be told twice. He bolted, leaving his friend to scramble to his seat, before Arlequina kicked him down once again. Perhaps he didn't care about his friend too much, because he didn't care enough to look what Arlequina did afterward. And once she was done, she stood there for a moment, her chest heaving as she tried to calm the storm raging within her. Her hand twitched at her side, itching for more. But she knew this wasn't what you would want. You had always urged her to take a gentler approach, to temper her wrath with reason. It was a lesson she struggled with, but for you, she tried. I'm sorry. I couldn't let them tarnish your memory. She whispered, the words directed to the empty night sky. And soon enough, she returned to the orphanage. And the children were still sleeping peacefully. The warmth of the building felt stifling compared to the cold outside. But it reminded her of you. The way you had brought warmth into her life. Into this place. And the way it lingered even now. And sitting in the quiet of your previously shared room... She pulled out a small keepsake of yours, a locket, with a picture of the two of you inside. When you bought it, she had thought it rather cheesy, but right now, she couldn't help but appreciate you for getting it. She traced her fingers over it, her heart aching with the weight of your absence. And this time, when the tears came to her eyes again, she just closed them and took a deep breath, willing them to stay there. She wouldn't cry any longer. She couldn't. Because now, she was once again alone, with no one to rely on. You were gone, and that was the way it would remain. And there wasn't a single thing that she could do to change that. But at the very least, you would stay forever in her heart.